Here's You're his bro. stalking horse. What's the evidence? You're his bird you dog. You made the charge. You send another good. goon well, to my daughter's to house and he'll take you out, buddy. You're going to take me out? Yeah. How are you going to do that? Watch. Watch. What are you, threatening me? Hey, hey. She treat me as if I was not a human being. She said, I cannot help you. And from now on, you don't know me, and I don't know you. I can't imagine what those parents are feeling today. And those people who helped to lead him to that bridge um, are going to have to bear that responsibility for the rest of their lives. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Richard French. So we're going to get to your reaction regarding that tragic suicide of the Rutgers University student and what punishment ought to be handed out. That's coming up a little bit later in the program. But I want to start this hour with a candidate who has in many ways come to symbolize this irregular election season. He's a man I believe is not fit to be the governor of New York, and this goes way beyond just sending racist emails or wanting to send people to welfare while making them go to prison. I'm talking, of course, about Carl Palladino. This a man who admits to having an extramarital affair and even fathering a child out of wedlock, telling his wife about that loved child years later on the way to their son's funeral. It's a man who has proven himself, as we've covered many, many times, to be a racist, bigot, anti-Semite, confirmed hypocrite, and above all else, reckless. And here's the scariest part of all. According to some recent polls, he's just a few points away from potentially becoming the next governor of New York. Now, if all that doesn't scare you, we're about to show you what should. When the story of the 2010 New York gubernatorial campaign is written, yesterday it very well may be known as the day that Carl Palladino crossed the line, the line of any semblance of taste, the line of acceptable political behavior, and the line where this man simply becomes unelectable. If it doesn't, I think New York's got a lot of questions much bigger than just an election to answer. I want to bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, with those ugly details. And Rish, you were talking about yesterday. It ended with Carl Palladino caught on tape and making a not so veiled, non specific threat against Fred Dicker of the New York Post. And that may not even have been the worst of his transgressions. For all his guff and bluster, Carl Palladino has been, so far, unsuccessful in his attempts to make the story of this race Andrew Cuomo and not Carl Palladino. So in an interview with the Politico's Maggie Haberman, Palladino tried to turn the table, seeking to shift focus away from his own questionable behavior. Quote, has anybody asked Andrew Cuomo about his paramours, he asked. When he was married, Palladino continued, or asked him why his wife left him or threw him out of the house. Has anybody ever done that? What are they doing intruding on my life? And in a departure from the norm, the first reaction to Palladino's comment came from the reporter herself. Maggie Haberman calling the comments, quote, the most astonishingly personal claim I've ever personally covered from a major candidate for which he offered no proof. Others, including Republican strategists, noting that attacks like these are usually done through surrogates. One more note, the New York Post apparently sent a photographer to the home of Palladino's 10-year-old daughter, the product of that affair, seeking to take her picture. And with that, the fuse had been lit. Very what careful. evidence do you have for something that most people would consider I, a smear? I want to know why you sent your goons after my daughter. I said daughter. no one after well, I want to know, what Fred. Does that have I want to do with your about charge it. against Cuomo. Do you have the evidence or do you not? Fred, I, fingers don't. I will pro at the appropriate time. You're you going to hear it. How, he's got yes, three I daughters. Do. How can you say that about him? Oh, oh I have a daughter too, yeah, you Fred. You talked about her. I have publicly. a daughter. You brought right. it out, Fred. That's it. Stay away from me. What evidence do you have? Listen. All right. You ever hear about when did you, you send, you send one of your you ever after my daughter? Your send it, send it one more time. Here. That's Paladino campaign manager Michael Caputo trying to get between his candidate and the Post's Fred Dicker, telling Paladino to head to the men's room looking to get him away from the cameras. But Paladino did not. We pick up the confrontation with another Paladino staffer confronting Dicker. Stay away from me, man. Don't touch me. Take it easy. Men go in that bathroom. Who are you? Who the hell are you? I'm trying to ask him a question. Go ahead, ask me a question. Do you have any evidence for the charge you made? It's a simple question. Of course I do. You'll get it at the appropriate time. You're not entitled to it. At the appropriate time, you'll get it. This guy's the attorney general of New York. And you're his stalking horse, Fred Dick. Say it. You're his stalking horse. What's the evidence? You're his bird dog. You made the charge. You send another goon to my daughter's house and he'll take you out, buddy. You're going to take me out? Yeah. How are you going to do that? Watch. Watch. What are you, hey, threatening hey, me? Hey, hey, Gentlemen. Fred. I'm Ken Adams. I'm running the event. You're out for governor. And you're working for Cuomo. In case you missed it, there are a couple of lines from that exchange that bear closer viewing. 
The first sounds a lot like Palladino threatening Dicker. Oh, you send another goon to my daughter's to house and I'll take you out, buddy. You're gonna take me out? Yeah. How are you gonna do that? Watch. An apparent threat with no specifics from Palladino. But that wasn't the only time Palladino refused to back up what he said. Do you have any evidence for the charge you made? It's a simple question. Of course I do. Where you'll get it at the appropriate time. time. That's You're not entitled to it. Be? At the appropriate time, just, you'll get it. Palladino today has been in something of damage control mode, claiming Dicker instigated the altercation. And in an interview, he tried to link Dicker to the climate in Albany Palladino's campaigning against. All right, he comes completely out of context and shoves a microphone in my face, starts poking me in the chest, and confronts me with a statement that I never made. All right? And I said, I'll answer that at the appropriate time, because I, had a, I, I didn't know that I had said that. This establishment class in Albany, they've been feeding at the public trough for so long that they don't know other life. They can't. That's more than a little weak here, Andrew. <laughs> what... A Again, for the setting, because it's come out here in multiple uh, publications, and even the candidates acknowledge that the Palladino fathered a child out of wedlock, mm -hmm. um, now all of a sudden, and, and by the way, his wife acknowledged all the details, told about how she learned about not only the affair, but the existence of a child on her way to a sudden death of, of their son. On the way to the funeral, he said, hey, you're going to see in an obit page, by the way, that there's another kid out there that I sired. So all that comes out, and he blames it not only on Cuomo, but he says Cuomo's had a lot of affairs. Mm -hmm. And then you see, obviously, Dicker say, prove it. And that was where the, I guess the exchange got even more heated. Well, and, and Palladino Alfred said in the piece, absolutely no proof of the allegations that he's making against Cuomo. And then, of course, you get the confrontation with Fred Dicker. He seems to be trying to blame it on, on Dicker. There, there might have been something of a threat in there. Well, uh, before we even get yeah. what we just saw, for many people, they say, I've never seen a candidate you know, go there before. I can't think of one. Do we see a meltdown that some people will say, I love the whole Tea Party idea, but wait a minute, this guy just ain't altogether right. You know, you, I think you might see that among some undecided or independent voters, but think about it. If you're on Carl Paladino's bandwagon and have been up until now, you probably like the guy who's bringing the baseball back. But do you really Maybe like the idea, the Andrew, to say, a governor of New York, to say, I'll take you out? He threatened him, didn't he? I, I, I think he did. There are going to be some people, I think, who in his base who rallied behind Palladino as a result of seeing that. As for the actual threat, yeah, Palladino said, I'll take you out, but as we mentioned, he didn't do anything or explain himself. Palladino also said he's got proof of Andrew Cuomo's infidelities, but didn't say what it was or when he would reveal it. And something of a pattern we've seen from Palladino, you know, his best known campaign line, the reforming Albany with a baseball bat. When he was pressed this week for specifics, Palladino, again, he came up short. If you become governor, tell me how you're going to deal with this, uh, Sheldon Silver and the head of the Senate and all these entrenched politicians. We're, we're going to get rid of them. We're going to get them how, out of there. How do you get them out? Uh, you watch. Uh, you take away the money and you take away the power, and then they're gone. No specifics, no plan, no way to overcome the political opposition. He'll be guaranteed to face all guff, no substance. And frankly, I got similar answers when I pressed Palladino for similar specifics, Rich, in the two times that I interviewed him. But the part that Beyond the, the, I mean, we've gone through the emails yeah. here. If you haven't seen them by now, you haven't been paying attention. As racist and ugly as they get, they're homophobic. He's got bestiality. All stuff he says, oh, yeah, I passed him around. I found him real funny, mm -hmm. okay? The idea that the chief executive of New York uh, alienating constituencies with that. But beyond all that, he's a phony. He says that he's against Albany and everything that it stands for, but there's a record, Andrew, isn't of him putting his hand out, taking Albany dollars whenever he can. He's a millionaire who's made millions from the state, building buildings that state offices are held in, and then charging the state rent for it, and also getting grants for some for, for some uh, projects. And then when asked, hey, you want to lower your you're so concerned about Albany spending, you want to lower your rent, you want to give back some of that grant money? No, 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 no. And also, he's pumped money in through lobbying like nobody's business is a campaign contribution, so he'll take an Albany, he'll take a bat to all money to the candidates that he hasn't already funded their campaigns. Now, secondly, here's a guy who we were both at the Republican convention and covered it. They didn't want this guy near the platform, the Republicans did, conservatives either. But Rick Lazio says I'm not in the race, and magically now he's their candidate in both the Republican and conservative line. Talk about a guy with no friends. I mean, Paladino 
came in third out of three candidates of the Republican convention behind a Democrat, Steve Levy. And as you mentioned, he, the conservative party did not want him on the ballot. They had Steve, uh, they had uh, Rick Lazio there, but then they felt forced to do so uh, a little bit later on. And here's the quote from the conservative party chairman before they nominated Palladino. He's more of a caricature, not a candidate, adding that the conservative message is catching on, but it's not happening with a guy who calls people names. So that gives you a sense of how much Palladino is disliked in the conservative party, but they have to get a certain threshold of votes so they put him on the ballot. And you talk to any Republican running for office, whether it's for the state legislature, whether it's for the House, whether it's for the Senate. And Everybody's avoiding him. Nobody, everybody, want, nobody even wants to question. They know he's radioactive, and you only can imagine what we're going to learn in the last 30-something days of the race. All right, now finally, some of those people that we saw jostling there with the camera, his inner circle here. Tell us a little bit about the dream team of Carl Palladino. <laughs> dream team in quotes, Rich. We'll start with the, his campaign manager, the guy you saw in the video, uh, Michael Caputo. According to the New York Times, Caputo failed to pay some $53,000 in federal taxes over the past few years. The IRS has taken uh, action against him. Here's Caputo's response to the IRS flap. Quote, this is a campaign of junkyard dogs, not pedigreed poodles. Nice alliteration. Carl knows the background of everyone who works for him. He knows that each of us comes to the campaign with warts, and he has his own warts. We don't hide anything. And then there's Paladino's driver, a guy named Russ Thompson. He's a Tea Party organizer who has served time in jail in Arizona for drunk driving. This is Paladino's driver, damaging a vehicle in a hit and run and driving with a suspended license. An arrest warrant was issued after Thompson failed to show up for a court hearing. He says he didn't drive, uh, he hadn't drunk in 20 years, and when questions he erupted in an expletive lace tirade and said, I fight a lot dirtier than Carl does. And Paladino's campaign chairwoman also has a shady past. Her name is Nancy Naples. She left her position as Erie County Comptroller after the Buffalo News reported that she had directed $1 billion, that's 80% of the county's bond business, to one of her campaign donors. And finally, John Haggerty Jr., he's one of Paladino's political strategists. Haggerty was indicted for allegedly stealing $1.1 million from Mayor Michael Bloomberg in New York and using part of that money to buy a house. And I don't think I'll get Bloomberg's endorsement here. <laughs> somehow I, I don't think so. But again, it's just the spectacle of what we've seen. And the, what I couldn't help thinking as I'm watching this is all the garbage that we've reported on in Albany and how everybody wants to see it cleaned up. And the guy who says he's going to clean it up is bringing even, tired, bring in even know, more garbage. Here's the part. You and I have spent more than a year now saying they need to clean house in Albany. We agree the system's broken, we got dysfunctional government, but the idea that this guy would come in there and first of all bring any substance, I'm still waiting for the first thing he'd actually do other than this baseball bat of his, and that the idea that he wouldn't be the most divisive figure, I mean not just divisive because he's taking on special interests, but because he's taking on blacks, he's taking on gays, he's taking on Jews, I mean this is the best New York can do? One, one more thing that's going to infuriate you. One of his advisors and one of his financiers is Tom Golisano, the guy who from Buffalo who ran for governor a few years ago, funded the coup last year. Something to think of. Thank you very much, Andrew. All right, when we come back, everybody, we're going to turn away from politics and get to an issue um, that's not just disturbing, but just flat out tragic. It comes out of New Jersey, a young man killing himself, jumping to his death, up the George Washington Bridge. Police say the Rutgers University student did it because his private moments with another male student secretly streamed for the world to see on the internet. Now two other students at Rutgers facing charges that could land them behind bars. It's a very sad story raising some very complicated legal questions. And as always, we want to bring you at home into our conversation. So here's our question for you. The Rutgers suicide tragedy. Should the cyber snoopers go to jail? 3876624288. Let me give you that toll free number again. 3876624288. We'll get to your calls and your emails coming up after this.